Today is just a quick video on the new updated beveling tools in Unreal Engine 5.4. This is something and a bit more of like a quality of life update where they've just sort of improved their beveling tool to be a lot more like standard or traditional 3D modeling software. In 5.3 and prior versions, you could only pretty much like chamfer edges, but you could not make them a smooth bevel. So you would just have a chamfer with no smoothing subdivision option. In the new 5.4 version, you can actually add subdivisions as well as change the bias of whether it's beveling outwards or inwards. So I'm just gonna go through those quick examples and hopefully this is useful. Okay, so I'm just in a basic scene and using version 5.4.0. First thing that you will want to do, even though I'm probably sure it's enabled by default, is enable modeling tools editor mode in your plugins window. Uh, I haven't actually tried the modeling mode in static mesh editor, so definitely keen to try that as well. So once you have that enabled, you can just go to modeling in the selection mode drop down menu. And the first thing we'll do is go to create box and let's just do some simple beveling on a box. That should be fine, just hit accept. I'll go to this side so we can see a bit better. Now once you have made your box, you can go to the model tab and then go to polygroup edit. This is where you have access to your vertices, edges and faces. As you can see, I'm just gonna turn off my vertices and faces for now and then just leave my edges on and then select all the edges of my box. And once you've done that, you can then select bevel. And as you can see here, I don't know why I love saying that so much. There's a bunch of tools that you can use as well. So we'll focus on bevel. And this is pretty much what the old uh, beveling tool would do. It would just be a straight chamfer with no curve to it. And now you can see on the panel here, they've added subdivisions, round weight. Uh, they've even added material ID things. So really useful, pretty cool for them to finally upgrade the tool, even though I kind of expected they should have done this in the first version, but it's okay, at least we have it now. So the default is a bevel distance of four centimeters. I'm gonna just change it to a one or maybe a 0.5. And then here is where you can see if I just type in three in the subdivisions, it's now curved. But you can see like in this corner. So if I go back down to zero and one, two, three, five, six, whatever you wanna do. And then you can also toggle show wireframe and then you can see the actual subdivisions being made on the cube. So if I go down to zero, there's no subdivisions and then it slowly adds it on. So let me quickly, and then make sure you hit accept and then accept again, because otherwise it will revert back to the default cube we made earlier. Let me just quickly put a metal object on so you can see that's the bevel. Okay, so now let's just add a few more complexities and make some extrusions as if we were modeling, you know, a tech product or something with paneling. So I'm just gonna go to my polygon selection, select that face, go to my face edits, inset that a little bit to somewhere there, and then go to extrude and I'll extrude it a little bit. And then let me inset again and then extrude inwards a little bit. And let's leave it at that and hit accept. So now we can go back to our polygroup edit, go to our edges, and then let me try using the edge loop selection. So yep, it's working, sometimes it doesn't. So this is really useful for just selecting continuous edge loops. So let's start with these two guys here and then go to bevel. And I'm gonna make these like a 0.1 and hit accept and then accept again. So now we've got a bit of a bevel there. And actually, let me control Z that. And I also want to select these guys. Yep, so I want the corners as well. And then also I want the inner corners. So I just went from my edge loops to ring selection to select each corner. And then now we go bevel, 0 0.1, should be fine. And then accept, and then accept. 
So now you can see we have these nice bevels on that edge. Now let's try the changing the weight of the bevel. So I'm just going to go to loop selection. It's like this guy. Let's say we wanted to bevel this edge and make it 0.5, which is huge. But if I play with the rounding weight, you can see we're actually changing the bevel from going outwards to inwards. So because in this case, it is uh, two faces of a polygon meeting into a concave corner, the default value will obviously bevel inwards. And then if I go negative, it'll go outwards. So we could go inwards here to get a really nice sharp uh, bevel, or we can go a bit further out to get more of a smoother finish. And then we can up the subdivisions too. And if I make this one, you can see you can make it even bigger, two, three. So pretty, pretty cool, the stuff you can do with the new beveling tool. So I'm just gonna leave this on like a 0.4 maybe. And then maybe reduce the bevel a bit to yeah, a 1.5 and then hit accept and accept. So that's a really cool new addition to the beveling tools. Now the next thing I want to show you is how to import an asset or an object from another software and then bevel that rather than creating something in Unreal because that is obviously the most common workflow when working with Unreal Engine. So I just have this random cube with you know, a hole cut out and, a, and I've moved some edges down with the vertices kind of being stretched because once we subdivide it, it'll have a nice smooth fall off and then the circle will also be nice and smooth. And then I've added a cloth surface to give it thickness because if I flipped it around and did cloth surface for thickness and then subdivisions, it would have made this edge smooth, but I wanna leave it sharp so that we can smooth it in Unreal just to kind of replicate an example that might happen when you download an asset or you forget to bevel something, uh, yada, yada, yada. I never even say yada, yada, yada. And I've also got this cylinder in the middle to kind of act like a knob that we will also bevel in Unreal. And then I'm just going to export both of these things as an FBX. Okay, so I've just imported those two objects in. I'm just going to select both of them and drag them into the scene. And then let me just rotate it a bit, place it into the light here. Cool. So let me hide the cylinder for now and let's just focus on our box so you can see here that's that sharp edge that i was talking about around the hole cutout now when we have our object selected and then go to polygroup edit you'll notice this object has only a single polygroup use the group gen group point or try selection create polygroup tools to modify polygroups. A lot of that does not make sense, but pretty much what that means is this doesn't know where the edges and faces are yet because we haven't assigned them. Uh, even though obviously with built-in geometry that you create, it'll be automatically included. So to add those polygroups, you know, faces, edges, vertices, you just want to go to attributes. Uh, sorry, cancel out of the polygroup edit that we were doing before. Go down to attributes and then generate polygroups. And now you'll see that it is kind of analyzing the imported geometry and then creating faces and edges and vertices based off of that. So this is using face normal deviation with an angle tolerance. So if we increase the angle tolerance, we can go from 0.1 to let's just max out at 60. It'll now group faces that have an angle of 60 degrees or less together. And anything greater than 60 degrees, it'll separate into a different group. So that's why you can see here, it is kind of separated all of these guys into different uh, faces and uh, groups. And you can obviously go higher, you can go 180, not sure how to make it one single thing. You can also try the other option, so find quads. And this will actually analyze the object's quads that you have modeled in your 3D modeling software and it'll replicate that. Uh, and you can do try all these other methods as well. UV islands, if you've UV unwrapped it a specific way and then you wanna bevel based on those seams, also very useful. But for this example, I'm just gonna do face normal deviation and then just do 60 degrees and then hit accept, nice. And then we'll go back to model, polygroup edit, and then go to edges. And for some reason, uh, I don't know why I said that word, 
For some reason, loop selection or edge loops do not work when I create these. Uh, ring selection, I think, does, yeah, but for some reason, loop selection doesn't, but um, we can just select it manually, so I'll just do this. Oh, actually, I should have done this. Boom, 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 and boom. And then we can go to bevel, and this is where we can just play with our values again. So two is way too much. It'll overlap each other. So I think this would be good at like a point 0 0.05. And then let me hit accept and then accept again. Give it a sec. And now to really see it, let me just drag a metal material on it. There we go. And now you can see this has that nice little smooth fall off and lighting and highlight as well on the edge. So if I control Z and let me undo it turns out you cannot control Z. Let me actually just drag in the source object again. So give me one sec. So you can see here, this has the nice beveled edge and then this one has the sharp edge. So it definitely makes a big difference to like the fidelity of a model and actually giving it some detail and realism. And then here I'll just enable my knob and then Go to poly editing mode, so that is shift five for the shortcut. Generate poly groups, accept, model, poly group edit, and then just select my edges, bevel, and then maybe I'll give this a bigger bevel, like a 0.15, and then hit accept, and then accept. Boom. Now, you gotta remember when you are editing these meshes, it is actually editing your source object. So this is why this object here on the left, I had to re-import that same FBX. So this is what I imported, right? And if I drag it out onto the scene, drop a metal material on it, you'll notice the thing I imported is beveled because those modeling tools we do actually edit the source uh, object that we import. It doesn't edit it, edit the actual FBX, but it edits what Unreal has imported. So the .ua asset file. Now the next useful thing I'll show you real quick is very similar, but actually this background you see here was also made using the bevel tool. So to do something similar is just go to modeling mode again. So shift five, drag in a box, hit accept, go to model, polygroup edit, uh, face selection, turn off loop or ring selection, sorry, and then just delete all the unused faces and then select these two and we just got to flip the normals here so that they're facing us, drag it up a bit and now you have a background. So let me quickly drag a material on it before I bevel it. Sorry, for some reason the normals are behaving weird. So when that does happen, you can just go to modeling mode, attributes, and then normals, and then it'll recompute the normals and then hit accept. And now the shading will get fixed. Sorry, random bug. That's actually not happened to me before, but I'm glad it did for the tutorial. So while this is still selected, go to model, polygroup edit, do the same thing we did before, just select your bevel. Actually, first let me make it a lot bigger. So drag these guys out and then drag these guys out and then this guy and then this guy. Obviously I'm clipping through lights here, but should be fine. <laughs> And then back into polygroup edit, select our the intersection and then go to bevel. And let's make this something like that maybe. And then here with the rounding weight, you can actually change the sharpness of that bevel. So really useful. And remember you can always type in values higher than that. So 250 if you want a much uh, bigger bevel, maybe you have a massive studio background and then you can hit accept, accept, and there we go, we now have a studio background. And if you hit search in the static mesh on the bottom right, these are all the different static meshes that you've created using the modeling mode. So it saves it here in content generated and then your username. Now, one thing you may have noticed throughout this whole process, let me just delete this guy, is there are some weird smoothing issues. 
So again, if I make a box, shift one, let me drag like a really plain material on it. Go back to modeling mode. Let me bevel the edges. You'll notice like weird smoothing happening on the edges and even like a bit of banding that could just be subdivisions. But even if you go, yeah, see here in this corner, there is always like a really hard edge on the smoothing whenever a bevel meets like a 90 degree face. So I'm not actually sure what's causing that. So if you do know, please let me know in the comments. I've tried remeshing it. I've tried recalculating the normals. I've tried looking at the tangents as well. And I'm not entirely sure how to fix this weird issue where if you do have a bit more of a bigger bevel to something, these weird harsh fong issues or shading issues become really apparent. So please do let me know in the comments if you do know, but typically I do quite little or small value bevels on objects. So this is really useful again, if I wanna quickly create a studio background, if I have like skirting at the bottom of a wall in an architectural scene, I can quickly bevel that. Uh, also when I'm importing assets, sometimes the edges on imported assets I've downloaded online haven't beveled certain edges or anything that I forget to bevel, I'll just do it in here and it's just really useful to get something really quickly done. Hopefully this was useful. Catch you in the next one. Peace.